New Hall Gaming. Game. Survive. Win. What is up, YouTube? And welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included on the Frozen Pack. And we have water, so I am finally going to use that water. And the first thing you obviously do with some plumbing, anyway, is the toilet, sink, and showers. Though showers will be a bit difficult because my base setup is three tiles tall, and showers, of course, are four. But at least with this in in situ we do have the ability to do it if we wish firstly though we're going to concentrate on having the toilets plumbed in and the sinks to allow us to take that step forward in terms of fluid you can see we have a decent amount and a lot of ice to melt there are many different ways of doing it and the ways that i chose to do it were risque let's say now, of course, the maximum amount of duplicates we're planning to use is 12. The game completion event is 12. So no more than that. Obviously, if I lose someone due to death, I can replace them. But the idea is not to go above 12. Farm-wise, we're doing well. Both the fox farms and the behemoth farms are doing well. The wood is draining. This is our current setup. This will change a lot over this episode, very likely. Um, because there's a lot of problems and issues I find made my way up to the teleporters But I did decide that I am actually trying to Do this playthrough on one asteroid. I'm not sure if that's physically possible especially with the complexities that are in the what they called the happiness or morale of the duplicates so that they basically what I'm trying to say is I'm not sure if I've got everything on this asteroid that I can achieve the achievement with yeah so we'll see if I can't I'll just go somewhere else likely I'll skip the teleporter um, and just fly somewhere because it feels a bit cheesy at least if we fly somewhere it's more realistic in terms of difficulty now there is still a lot of snow about power issues are apparent the four generators we have here now, the four wood generators, are not enough to keep our base sustained, i.e. none of the machines filled up, and more importantly, the batteries uh, charged. And if the batteries don't charge, they don't turn off the generators, therefore we're just burning fuel infinitely. And of course, that is going to be a problem. We are growing trees. Uh, the bomb on trees that are giving us wood but they're not that fast and certainly not as fast as we have to burn it to sustain the power now this bottom area down at the bottom i am going to come to that shortly because that is what i want to try and use for the power i have realized actually that with mods the mods for this as long as the mods support spaced out add-on pack they work with the frozen pack they don't even though if you set it to frozen pack and they don't show so far every single mod i have used in the previous series that was spaced out is working perfectly fine with zero crashes on the frozen pack so far so that includes the thermal generator which means that we can pull power out of that heat and i'm hoping to try and make that happen though a little bit of research is required to actually achieve that Jumping forward a few cycles, I have an edited the base slightly. I've increased the size, there you can see, of the water storage. Um, that is so that we can store more until I can figure out how I'm going to do it. I've tried, with a bit of research, to get some power coming from out of here. Now, there's two problems with this process. The first one being, well, that there is a lot of areas that are open to the void of space which means i have to keep capping them off so i don't lose the gas because if there's no gas in the room of the generators it won't work very well secondly is getting them to a temperature where they will run efficiently and effectively to generate power but not overheat because lava is clearly a lot hotter than that now you can see i did have a very quick setup further down i'll probably show that in a second 
um, but I've moved it up there because it's out of the way for the radiation. Yep, there. So one there I had that set up. Quickly just put it together um, and research the thermogenic generator. As soon as that was done, I have then, of course, just moved it up here out of the way. So it's not like anybody's going to be running into the rad bolts because the rad bolts will do you no good. Also, the temperature regulation from the wheeze warts and the radiation from them is better off being not near my base. Certainly not in a place where people or the duplicates walk backwards and forwards from. I am going to pull down that ethanol there. You can see, try and shove it in a storage tank, something that's out of the way. The idea being there is that we can then dig up and get onto the surface. Now in terms of heat in this room, it's working based on the materials and aggregate we got from that hot area previously, though it did nearly kill quite a few people. It is working, but I can't put many of the ice tiles in there, otherwise it makes it too cold and the ice overpowers the heat and then it just doesn't melt anything so i need to figure out a better way of doing that and suffice to say it's obviously going to come from the lava down below once i have some form of infrastructure i am not sort of going to say that this isn't dangerous i am liable to use lose duplicates doing this um there are other ways of doing it geothermals the things that people have done in the past but i don't like to do the same thing over and over again although I am using the thermo generators. But this, on this occasion, I'm not using them to cool things that are too hot. I'm using them to actually just generate power. Actually, if anything, I need the heat uh, because the point of the map is that it's too cold, right? Farms are doing okay. Obviously, the pears, it's not the pears, actually, is it? It's the plums. Yes, the plums um, that are grown for the behemoths. They are the purple-looking things there. Yes, they're dying or not growing even because we ran out of ethanol which is why i'm sorting out the ethanol on the other side as well so not to worry we will have some fluid for them shortly and the behemoths should not run out of food um, if they do they'll die off but we'll have plenty of eggs anyway so i'm not too worried i would like to increase the farms as well because unfortunately the cramped morale decrease is on because we don't have the super size farm mod on so I'm only allowed either six to eight. I can't remember the exact number. It depends on the critter um, in there, but I'm going to sort that out. I just need to build out the bedrooms and push them down and also make sure that the base is being heated in the correct spaces and places. Also, a caveat that I always forget to do, and I've just done it there and noticed it will bite me in the future. The cinnabar, which turns out to be mercury, which is the newest of the metals for this game, from this pack uh, is actually pretty useless for building anything at all of any warmth remember that mercury is itself at room temperature is a liquid so it's not going to last very long i build quite a lot of stuff out of it unknowingly and then it melts in the future causing it to liquefy or even worse gas off uh, mercury is a very very dangerous gas so best not to allow it to do so with the plumbing in place, we seem to be working well. I'm not worried about running out too soon because they only use it in the mornings and in the evenings without too much of an issue. But we will need to eventually have a solution for processing the polluted water. I added three more generators, wood burning generators. You can see that is working. The power is going up. However, we are not going to be able to sustain that with wood. We do not have enough. Okay, I've jumped quite far ahead now. It's been about 12 cycles or more, probably. Um, and it's because I've been doing a lot of science. You can see now that I'm now setting up a electrolysis room to turn the water into oxygen and hydrogen. But the hydrogen part is a byproduct that I don't necessarily need at the minute. However, this is now set up and available to us because we did sort out the heating. I didn't record it though. If anybody is interested on that sort of thing, let me know in the comments and I will of course make shorts or videos specific to that. Alternatively, if you're interested in me actually fumbling around science and causing problems, um, also let me know and I can keep them in the storyline. I'm taking it on advantage that you'd rather see the good stuff and not all the things that go wrong in the meantime. I have lost, I believe... No, I haven't. No, I haven't. I'm lying to you. At the minute, you can see there that there is two um, 
gravestones, which means we've only lost two duplicates. In this process, I definitely lost another two more, unfortunately. Um, because going down and getting the heat in, and, and training that heat to do what we need. Two things, which is melting ice, which is critical with this stage. But also generating power. Means that my duplicates need to go into areas that they really shouldn't be going into. I don't have power suits. I have no way of really doing that either. And even if I could make them, which I suppose material-wise I can, I can't or don't have enough oxygen to produce to keep them working. Just extending this electrolysis room, it's far too short in terms of height. Um, the hydrogen needs a lot more space to spread. So I'm going to do that. Of course, I hope I remember, and I do, to block off that in the bathroom as well. We do not want the hydrogen going in the bathroom. Now, in terms of water, you can see our extended storage is indeed full. And it will continue to fill up and lightly overflow. And it has done a couple of times. There is an additional pump in there. That pump there on the top left-hand corner is for the electrolysis. Now, I've done it the easy way. Instead of doing complicated automations, flows, pumps, gauges, and all the crap that you can do, and I've done before, instead, I've put the pump higher up. Is that it's three tiles down? Maybe four. Um, and the idea is that any water that is above that can be used for electrolysis and oxygen and hydrogen. However, anything below that will be stored for actual water. Now, you can see this is what I ended up doing, and it's still the same as before, but just taller. Two separate buildings, one on the left, one on the right. This one on the right is taking the gas because it's the best way of doing it. I don't have the liquids to do like I normally would. And I don't have oil or petroleum to stop it gassing out anyway. Using water would be terrible here. The gas goes through those metal tiles, which amazingly iron is... It's about 50 degrees. The melting point is 50 degrees above the temperature of lava. So I got very lucky there where they will stay as a solid metal and transfer that heat. Here you can see the other side, this is just gas going around into that area that's full of steam. Uh, I dropped a load of water in there because I was doing something else in the bottom and just managed to catch it. And you can see this is working very nicely. This is keeping this room in between 3 and 800 degrees at all times. So any liquefactables, which would be water uh, sublimation, so the sublimation of ice into a liquid of course, has to be only water so that would be ice snow and crushed ice i think it's called making sure they end up in there eventually they will then be melted into the water which will be pumped into the system and bob's your uncle we are turning that into plumbing and or hydrogen and oxygen so the plan is there and we do have uh, an ability to work it the power consumption or generation from that so far is managing to keep the entire settlement at bay i am not using any wood the wood generators have been totally taken out so i am micromanaging ever so slightly to make sure that every time i add something new in terms of power that it is able to keep up because if it breaks and stops working we're screwed um, I can just extend the amount of thermostatic generators that are in there to a point. I think I've got room for another three or four. Of course, everybody walking past this room is getting scolded because the door is not an insulated door. It's really crap. I haven't got the mod in that I normally have. So the door, although it's an airlock, not a very good one, just saying, um, it will let the heat, heat escape annoyingly. Somehow I'm not sure where I found them or how they were done, but I found a few more of these uh, carved lumen quartz things that create light. They are definitely my favourite option for lighting up the trees, the photosynthesis to keep the trees producing wood. Uh, they create no heat, or at least the heat that they do create is irrelevant to the game. Not like bulbs that you would need a crap ton of and they would slowly cause everything to stop growing because it would get too warm. As of yet, I haven't sorted out the ethanol for that room. I did pump it, like I said, I was going to do from the top. And I did pump it into a tank. I then dismantled the tank by accident, uh, selecting something that I shouldn't have done. And it got everywhere. And instead of trying to pick it up and make less of a mess, I just told them to mop it. So all over the place, there should be um, the canisters. It's higher up. But yeah, it's... Um, 
It's going to need emptying with bottle emptiers and then re pump it into a setup to get over to them. They're here, so we do have a decent amount of food. What I'm going to try and do here, and you can see all that carbon dioxide rushing out of there. Very, very hot. So the quicker we can get this built, the better. As soon as that insulated tile is done, we should stop creating additional heat out of the base or out into the base. So that is going to break out. Now that was eventually spread out. It will melt us some stuff, but what I think I'm going to do for now, I've just checked that there's nothing up there that I require. I'm just going to break the ladders and break the poles and stop them from going up there. There's no reason for them to. So if I do that on both sides, they should be safe. And with the electrolysis room almost finished, a couple of ant gates in there as well. Still need a bit of power to go in there, but I'm putting that in now. And you can see the pipes are being built as we speak. So we should be good. Three pumps for the oxygen, two for the hydrogen, and gates controlling both so that both sides should show that the gas element before the pumps will kick in. Now there is a bit of carbon dioxide in there where the guys have been breathing, which is why you can see the oxygen items are flickering at the minute. If we check that and actually look in the gas view, you will see that they are still working. Eventually, that little bit of carbon dioxide that's trapped in there that's causing the problem will get pumped out along with the oxygen. We can see that there it is now. And if we watch that just a little bit longer, you will see it gets faster and faster and faster until it goes pop and continues. And I think that is it. Yes, there you go. All the carbon dioxide has gone. Therefore, now it's oxygen only. And the generator is running one into the bottom of the base, middle of the base, and the top of the base to make sure that we don't die. Oxygen not included is the name of the game, and it was probably the most difficult way of doing it I've had. Without algae, it's been very, very complicated. We still do have the aloe vera things at the bottom of the map, turning carbon dioxide into oxalite where needed. That is always a backup. But it needs to be stored a bit better, I think. You can see the water is overflowing. Um, we are using it, but I expected it to use more water than that. It's not using enough, so what I'm going to have to do is put a water tank in that is a buffer between the water tank that you can see and the electrolysis machine. That way, at least, if the pump gets the water down to that level of the top left-hand pump, there'll always still be the tank of water to work on to give us the oxygen. There are going to be, certainly below the, the lava level that we're using currently, there is oils and various other things um, because that's how the map is designed. It's the lab map. But to get there, we have to actually go through lava and I'm not sure that that's feasible. Also, I keep getting these. And I'm not sure how I'm getting them unless it's... Unless I'm heating something up and it's turning it into that quartz, I honestly don't know. I'm not sure where they're coming from, but I feel like I've collected them all and then I find two more. I'm not complaining though, because we still need two in here, so that's good. And I am going to level them out so that they're symmetrical because it was driving me nuts them being on the wonk. Now moving over to the farms. The farms are overflowing. There's too many in there. They are cramped and therefore we lose resources and eggs. So I am going to push down to new farms. I've moved the beds, the bedrooms, the barracks. And I'm just going to make two new farms. So there's two max size farms for the behemoths. Two max size farms for the flocks, foxes. Uh, all I'm losing really is a couple of those de incubators that I'm comfortable that we don't really need them anyway. We're, if we've got too many critters, then having loads of incubators doesn't really benefit anyone. And there we go. Four cycles later, magic editing shows you the exact same thing so i've separated i've kept them together so i had to move the behemoths down one and then they're on that bottom floor they're limited to eight for now they're not showing any issues yes you can see there's been two deaths this is what i meant earlier and that was to get this working now it is working very well but the heat kept escaping now i did of course break the ladders but they went up the right hand side I've had to put four doors in there to try and stop the heat from getting there because it was just getting silly. And as you can see, it's still breaking its way out. But for now, the liquid, the water itself, 
is critical. We have to have that. We need it. It needs to continue to come in. There's no excuses. We just have to. We're also using it for oxygen now, which is much sooner than I'm used to doing it. I mean, 120 cycles or so we did it. It's much sooner than normal. Nice big break there of the carbon dioxide at the bottom of the base. Um, I keep losing the ferns because the water, every time the water falls near a plant pot, it un uproots it. It's a bit odd, but yeah, it's what it does. So I have to keep mopping it up and replanting. But getting the water tank in should stop that from happening, and then we can get these growing. They will then slowly over time turn that carbon dioxide into oxalite. Water tank is in, as I said, uh, between the open water tank and the electrolysis room. It's about a third full, I think. And as you can see, we've got more water than we need here. It's actually overflowing now because the heat is melting some of the much larger, like 20 ton uh, blocks of ice. We're not actually melting the temp shift plates at the minute because I've not needed to as of yet. If anything, it's also a bit too dangerous to micromanage it too much. Getting somebody to go through them doors, it's very unlikely that they'll make it out alive. Um, up here, where that chloro... Not chloroform. That's definitely not what we're looking for. <laughs> the <laughs> ethanol. This is where it was. I've just dug out everything, as I said. I was going to... That was the whole purpose, so we could go past it to the surface. I cleared that out a little bit now, but to be honest... I'm not going to go up there just yet because we still need to sort some caveats out in the base. More importantly, a system of heating so that my guys are comfortable. But you need to be careful because what I've realized is the farms, uh, the critters do not like to be warm. So we need to segregate them, separate them, segregate, yes. And make sure that that heat is only for the duplicates good amount of water there stored the tank is now no longer overflowing which is a good thing because that means that we can stop damaging that whole bottom nothing much has changed i've dug out a lot of the crap that was underneath here they just putting some tiles it basically got to a point where there was coming up as idle so i just getting them to dig for the sake of it and once again with my dangerous projects in this anyway you can see somebody else is knocked down and needs rescuing so i'm gonna have to sort that out the hospital is full everybody is injured because of the way i'm doing it now it does work but you will find that you may lose people so be warned again i have replaced them already um the ones that were buried the two so two went down and two have been replaced in the meantime but we need to make sure we've got plenty of beds so that these guys can rescue themselves. I think, though, at this point, as soon as these are recovered and everybody's happy, we shouldn't need to put them through too much stress. And now we have the electrolysis running. I mean, Bubbles was really close to death there. Oh, dear. Um, but now we have the electrolysis running, I can probably get a couple of Atmos suits in for the specific jobs that need doing. Especially in that bottom section where it's the heat's coming from the lava and then in that room where we are indeed melting the ice. But we are at time now, so I am going to end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, till next time, take care. Goodbye.